Welcome to Creative Cooking in Ani's Kitchen. My name is Ani, and I'm going to bring to you today a recipe from the island, and it's called Sancocho. And this is a very hearty, very rich, and delicious meal. It's made of root vegetables, different kinds of meats, and I may have made it before, but I'm not sure if that video had migrated um, to my YouTube channel. Uh, I had problems with some from Facebook to migrate over to YouTube. And I tried looking in my library to see, because I would hate to be redundant, but, you know, uh, I didn't find it, so if there's another one out there and you come across it, well, you know, you got two for one. <laughs> what can I tell you? A two for. But anyway, I want to bring you that dish and show you just how we islanders do it, except I was born in New York, so New York is an island. Mm -hmm. um, I was born in the mainland, and... Um, and not in Puerto Rico. It is a Puerto Rican dish. Um, however, you know, it's actually a Caribbean dish because, you know, Dominicans cook this. Um, it's it's just a Caribbean dish. All right. And I'm finishing up the mabi. I decided to let it fertilize or ferment, rather. Fertilize. You hear me? Cuckoo. Cuckoo moment. I decided to let it ferment uh, an extra 24 hours, okay, so that it'll be even sweeter and less bitter. Um, I've got an appointment here at one o'clock, so I'm just I just want to start this video off and show you the ingredients um, as far as what's going in this sancocho. Um, this has nothing to do with the spices yet or anything like that. That I'll show you. Well, as I do the video, as I shoot the video. So I want to show you what the ingredients are. Here we go. Okay, for the ingredients, you're going to need yuca, okay, which is uh, taro root, I believe. No, it's cassava, okay? Yuca is cassava. It's from a root. We're going to use some carrots. You can use fresh. I'm going to end up dicing these up in chunks anyway. We're going to need some sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, some pumpkin, which we call calabaza. So, yuca, zanahoria, el llame rojo. This is called yame blanco. It's a white uh, yam. We're going to use two green bananas. And this in English is called malanga. In Spanish, we call it yautia. And that's a taro root. All right, so that's basically it for the vegetables. You can add whatever else you want to it, but that's what we use. For the meats, we're going to do, let me show you down here. We're going to do chicken. I've got this bag of drumsticks, which I'm going to wash, and I'm going to cut up like I do when I make my soup, my chicken soup. We've got um, some beef ribs, nice big chunks. But what I'm gonna do here, you see this part? This is good for making baked beef bacon. You brine it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut away, cut just like this, and then save that part for making beef bacon. I'm going to brine it and make some beef bacon. Then we've got some stew meat. 
And all this is going to be rinsed out. And in here I have two uh, smoked turkey parts. I'll probably add another one. Three for flavor. Alright, so um, that's going to be it for what I'm going to add for the meats. A lot of people put pork in it. Pork chops and stuff. We don't do pork here. Uh, you can do turkey meat, chicken meat, whatever kind of meat you want in here, you throw in there. Usually the original recipe, I think, uh, carries seven different meats in it. Yeah. So that's the meat I'm going to use. I'm going to rinse everything out. I'm going to dice everything up into chunks the way it's supposed to be. And then I'm going to season the meats and put it in that big cauldron right there and put it in the refrigerator because I'm not cooking this till Thursday. And today is Tuesday, the 20th, October 20th. All right, so, and then I'm going to wash, dice, and slice the vegetables. I probably won't use all of it because this recipe, I'm telling it grows. You know, you start cutting up these vegetables and throwing it in there and in the in the pot and it grows. Uh, before you know it, you've got a whole pile. Enough to, this is a meal that we say when you make this, you need to invite all your friends and your family or eat it with your family and invite all your friends. That's what they say because it's enough to feed an army by the time you get done. Trust me, you'll see. So I'm going to peel, slice, and dice, put away what I'm not going to use, and I'm going to rinse out. I'm going to put some lemon, the vegetables, and water with a little bit of lemon, and store it in the container and in the fridge until Thursday. And I'll bring you back, and we'll get rolling with this delicious meal from the Caribbean called Sancocho, Puerto Rican style. Until then. Okay, everyone, here we go. We're going to clean this meat and then season it. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So I'm going to start off with the stew meat. I did wash this sink and I will wash it again after I'm done. I will bleach it actually. Okay, so we're going to. Put this aside for now in the bag. Okay. Okay. Just rinse out the meat. Get all that excess blood. the beef stew or the stew be meat so with that I am going to and this is all I'm seasoning it with a double you can season it salt and pepper only if you want or whatever you want right now that's it and I'm gonna do it individually even though I'm gonna stack this meat I want to season them individually to make sure each one gets seasoned. Okay. And yes, I'm using my hands. My hands are impeccably clean. And of course, wash in between. Alright. So that's the first one. Okay. Back in here. So now what we're going to do we're going to wash smoke chapter tail and just rinse that out 
all that in there. Okay. Wash my hands. Now, this beef sausage, uh, summer sausage, I'm not going to cut open until uh, it's time to cook everything. It doesn't need to be rinsed out. Alright. Next thing is the chicken. In there. Take these little pieces of meat. Put them in there. I'm going to give that to Boots. All right. Okay, let's rinse that. That's okay. Now I've got to chop this up before I can put it in with the rest. I'm going to put a little bit of vinegar. Yep, And what I'm gonna do is chop this up. So, let me turn you around. Well, okay, here we go. Now I am going to, even though I washed that chicken, since I am going to cut it up and get on the inside, I am going to put on some gloves. Okay. Chicken has been washed very well. So here's what I want to do. I want to get rid of, and, uh, oh, Boots is going to love this. So, the little legs, I'll feed it to her with her daily chicken leg. Okay, and then we're going to cut the chicken like this. Just like we do when we're making the Spanish style chicken soup. Sopa de pollo. Okay. Oh, well, actually, I'm going to throw that in here. And throw that in there. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. This is how we cut up the chicken legs. And if you have thighs, you know, cut them up too. Cut them up into, cut them up into pieces that are almost like bite size, a little bit bigger that can be handled um, with a fork and bitten into, you know. You don't want the meat too small because it will disintegrate. Because it's a long cooking time. We want to make sure all the meat is well cooked and you know, very well cleaned, first of all. Then well cooked so there's no kind of cross contamination and because you got different kind of animals here. So and on the day of we will be 
braising all this meat. It does get braised before it gets thrown in to cook. And that's how we do this. So I'm going to finish here. I'll bring you right back as soon as I'm done. Okay. So we've got the chicken cut up in here. So I'm going to go ahead and put some adobo on it. I've already washed the uh, beef ribs, you can see right there. So I'm just gonna season this next layer of chicken with adobo. Okay. All right, so everybody gets a good coating of seasoning going in. So I'm wash my hands. I'm in my gloves. <laughs> okay. And now we're going to excuse me, slice away. As I mentioned, I'm gonna save some of this for the for bacon so slicing in half okay this will be I'm gonna brine this and make bacon out of it and slice strips this way that's what I'm going to do. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and put it in a Ziploc and freeze it until I'm ready to brine it and make bacon. Try to get it through this bone. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. The bone is pretty thick. I need a grinder for that. So, let's see if we can do it this way. Doesn't look like it. I still would have to take this. So that's what it's going to be, just like this. Three pieces. Well, four. <laughs> Let's see here. I may be able to do more than that. Well, I tried to break that bone, but that beef bone, uh, you need to put it through the saw and uh, reciprocal and 
cups is not here right now, so it is what it is. I can always get another one at the uh, Cuban store. Okay, so I got to season that. And here are the beef ribs. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and season it. So these are the hocks. And the beef stew. And the chicken. Turkey tails. Okay. And the beef sausage is going to go in there too. But I'm not going to put that in until it's time to or, yeah, to cook it because um, it doesn't need to be seared like the rest of the meat. Alright, so there it is. There's our meat ready to go. And we're going to put the lid on this and put it in the refrigerator in the garage. And because I don't have room in it, in the one here. And uh, wait until Thursday. So the next thing we've got to do is we've got to prepare the vegetables. So that's next. Stay tuned. All right. Now that we got the meat taken care of, it's on to the vegetables. Let me get all this wire out the way. So let's start with the easy stuff first. Also, this, uh, you're going to want to put corn in here, too. Corn cobs, you know. Yeah, that's part of the recipe. I think this is enough carrots. And put the rest away. is all I'm doing. Okay, we line them up. Just cut them in half. Everyone's having an amazing day, amazing start of the week. It's Tuesday, Monday's Ugly Sister. And, uh, it is raining here in Kentucky. Cloudy days. I haven't had, last night it was storming, and I love that kind of weather. I, I like to sit up and listen to it, just watch all the light, light come in. Across the sky. I love the sound of heavy rain. I love watching it. I love the way everything smells after rain and during rain. Just love everything about it. I really do. All right, so we got our carrots done. And these are the ones you could just steam. So I'm the ready microwave. 
I'm going to cook this side up. Let's see how many. Alright. So these you can just use a potato peeler and peel these away. Very easy as you can see. Peels right off, unlike the pumpkin. <laughs> oh, I hate cutting pumpkin and peeling it. Alright, so I'm just going to show you the size that we're going to cut these in. And I think. No, I'm going to do them like this. Okay. That's the size. These would be, this is like a chunky root vegetable uh, cuisine. About the only thing small from this dish, really, are the uh, spices, the leafy spices. Everything else is fairly large. We will be rinsing this out, so but no worries there. finish here and we'll move on to the next one in a second okay next one is gonna be the yuca the cassava because this is gonna be easy this is already peeled you can actually buy this already peeled and clean you buy it frozen all you have to do is just cut it up to the size you want it Okay, so that'll be all I'm going to use on that. The rest of this, that in the freezer. Okay, so. These have a string, so as you eat it, you can, it'll show up and you can take it out. Okay. Again, I will be rinsing these out. Let's go like that. And that's it for that. Let me go and clean up my space. Give me a second. Okay, next we have the Yaltia. Um, I'm sorry, the Yami. Always cut away any bad parts. Okay. Let's see. 
This is not ideal to peel or a potato peel because of the shape. But it's fairly easy. It comes off fairly easy though. Usually, let's see. The barbosa. This is like a slimy, yummy yam. Okay, so this one I think I'm going to cut the long ways first, lengthwise, and then into pieces like this. Okay, put this away. You freeze well. I put one the freezer out in the garage though. Okay, the next one will be the potatoes and you all know how to do that. Peel potatoes. For those, for all of my creative juniors or cadets, here's a here's a demonstration. Okay, you peel your potato. And then you want chunks like this. Okay, throw that in there. I'm going to finish this, be right back. Okay, next are the plantains. I called these uh, green bananas before. I didn't mean to, sorry. They're plantains and they're not ripe. They're the green plantains, unripened plantains. See what I mean about the bowl? Look at this. Look at all these vegetables already in there. Already getting full. I'm telling you, it grows. We're still not done yet. We still got the pumpkin, the malanga, or yatia, the platanos, and the corn. <laughs> I'm telling you. That's why you need a big pot like that. See? It probably won't even be big enough. But we're going to try. All right, so here are the plantains. Let's get to doing this fairly easy. Slice the ends. 
perforate the peel to the banana and you can use your finger or you can use a butter knife to separate the peel from the plantain from the banana itself So, what we're going to do is, we can cut them the long way, and then slices, or I think I'm going to do them like this, just like that, okay? Do the next one, again. Once you get your thumb in there, the rest should be easy, although it sticks sometimes. And you just like run your, your thumb right through. You should see when we have to do a whole bunch of these. And the green bananas. Your hands actually get stained green believe it or not and you gotta wash your hands scrub your hands with salt all right so bowl's getting kind of full there so next thing let's throw this away we're gonna move in right in with the pumpkin calabaza I stepped on the pedal to open the garbage can lid and it came down too fast and hit my hand and knocked everything on my hand to the floor. <laughs> ah. Some people save the seeds and they plant or they roast. I don't. I can't plant, I can't have a garden outside unless I build some kind of a Fort Knox barrier. I have too much wildlife out there. See, um, I'm surrounded by forest, you know. There's Fort Knox, and then there's forest all around that. There's forest all behind me. There's uh, Otter Creek. Uh, to southwest of me. So I'm really surrounded. I mean, I get deer through here and all. Let me get a, a spoon. I'm not satisfied with that. This, but here we go. Much better. Okay, scrape that right with a spoon, it comes right off. All right. Look at all that extra. All right. Let's out. Okie dokie. I'm 
just going to use half, I believe. Half of this. Very difficult to slice. Okay. The rest of this away. Had to take a sip break. <laughs> Woo. All right, so now we have to cut away the skin of the pumpkin, which is not always easy to do. Gotta really be careful not to cut yourself. I want to see if I can use the potato peel as much as I can. See. Got most of it done anyway. If you want to put squash, which a pumpkin is a squash, but the other kind that's easier to peel, go right ahead. You can actually, I think, find those already cut up, frozen, peeled and frozen. That would be fine. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to get the rest of this. Heal out. Okay. All right. Good enough. Okay, now we're going to cut this as best as we can. It's really tricky, I'm telling you. And that's it for that. Only one left to go. And that's the Malanga or Yaltia. Which is a taro root. Go ahead and get that done. Get the corn. Let me get the corn out so it can defrost and I can slice it up. corn. Got seven ears there. I'll probably just use four because they are going to be sliced up or maybe just three. Depends. All right. So now for the malanga, for the yatia. We're only going to use half. This is not 
That simple. <laughs> this away. Good thing about these root vegetables, they freeze well. So let's see if it'll fit in here. I don't think so. I don't think so, nope. I don't think it's going to fit in any of these. These are all small. So, what I'm going to do the round malanga they come in different shapes I always like to get the round one because they're easier to peel you know I guess Hopster must be home because Boots is barking she's alerting me that someone's there if I even mention the name of the word D-A-D-D-Y she'll start barking and make all kinds of noise. Watch. Is that daddy? This is all peeled. Let's throw this out so I can have room to cut. taping okay and there we go so
then we we'll just cut this like so. I'm gonna need a bigger container. It looks like the lid's not gonna cover that. And I still have the corn to put in there. So, let's see. I'm gonna have to look for a bigger container. I'll be back. Okay, you all. I have to switch because that. Uh, that bowl was not big enough. So I have to switch to a pot, which is okay. I'm over here washing it, everything out, and then we're going to go ahead and cut the corn. Okay. Get this milky substance off of the cutting board. That's from the Yaltia in the yuca. And the yami. Yep. So we're just gonna go ahead and wipe this down. Okay. All these little pieces has peeled off and flying everywhere. What am I doing? Okay, I don't need that. I do need this. I don't need that. Done with all that. Excuse me, guys. <laughs> all right. Let me put you a little closer. All right. So we're going to. I'm going to put some water in this so they don't brown. Cold water. And I'm going to rinse them out first. Let me turn you around so you can see. Okay. Rinse them out. Get little things like this, you want to peel that off. That's still part of the skin that I missed. Okay.
everything looks good now. Just a little bit over here. salt. Yes, I don't. So, gotta use table salt. Sorry about that. Alright. So, we're good on that. Now we're just going to cut up the corn, throw that in there, and we'll be able to put that away. Back to the cutting board. how you want them. Just like that. Okay. And be careful they will roll from you. the corn. You know, there's only two left. I'll just go ahead and throw it in there. Might as well. Instead of taking up room in my freezer for just two corns, neutral corn split. Okay. Folks, 
this is all of the root vegetables that we are going to use for this dish. And that is a lot right there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this lid on this and oh, put it in the fridge until Thursday and we'll go ahead and cook it. So until the next video, which will be the actual, hold on. Okay, as I was saying. So until the next video, which will be the actual cooking of this dish, of the Sancocho, you know, God bless you all. Take care of yourselves and one another. Again, this is the prep video for the Sancocho, Sancocho dish. It's a Caribbean dish. Cubans make it. Dominicans make it. I mean, it's just all over the island. I'm sure Jamaicans have their uh, version of it. So... Make yourself some, you know, try out a little batch at first, you know, maybe just one of each root vegetable, small ones, you know, and uh, a couple of pieces of each and uh, try it with one meat first, you know, stew meat or a chicken one or try it first and then if you like it then you can just grow from there remember this is a meal you make it's enough to feed an army it really is um so make sure when you make it it's for an occasion uh if you have family that's coming to visit or you have people from out of town coming to see you um it's great for Thanksgiving, you know, add a little bit of spice in your menu. You know, some Puerto Rican flavor can never go wrong with that. But anyway, so go ahead and make yourself some. Try it out. Again, this is the prep video. It does take time to prep for this dish. It really does. And we haven't even gotten to the sautéing part or anything of it yet. Um, but that's to come. All right, we have to see your meat. Yeah, it takes a while. Um, you're looking at a good five to six hours. That's why I always like to prep first. And that, that could take about two hours, you know. And then the cooking of the meat, you know, you have to make sure you sear it first. And then you have to cook the beef and all that for a good hour. And then you have to go ahead and prepare your sautés. You have to, um, halfway through your meat cooking, you have to throw in those root vegetables that take a long time to cook. So you would set a timer for 30 minutes, then throw them in there with added water and cook everything down for the another 30 minutes. And then you do your saute of vegetables and seasonings, you know, peppers and all that stuff, so frito, garlic, all that. And sauces and then you know you put it bring everything together uh, then you put in your uh, fast cooking vegetables like potatoes and carrots you know those you put in last and your corn so yeah it it takes a minute and then you have to prepare the side dish this goes really well and it's common to serve white rice with it and avocado slices Okay, that's what usually goes with this. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it takes a lot, but it is delicious. I gotta tell you, the reward is the best tasting cuisine, island cuisine. It really is at the top of this class. Okay, so anyway, until the next one, God bless you all. I hope you try this. Again, this is the prep video for Sancocho. Okay, I'll see you on Thursday for the actual cooking. Until then, take care of yourselves and one another. Bye.